Bismillah, elhamdülillah. <coughs> Salatu wassalamu ala rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. This is Riyad Razazi. We're coming to you to the uh, new series or this series, the Seerah of the Prophet Muhammad sallam, entitled Upon the Footsteps of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, today we are with episode number 15. Episode number 15. Uh, yesterday we talked. Uh, yesterday we talked about the uh, uh, you know the the after the persecution after you know the abuse that the Sahaba that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu had gone through. Quraysh uh, started you know some sort of negotiations with uh, with Prophet Muhammad alayhi uh, salam. They started some sort of also compromise, not only negotiations but also trying to work out the deal with Prophet Muhammad as long as he stops his mission, his da'wah, because their uh, trade was getting affected big time, you know. Their trade was getting impacted because Prophet Muhammad, of course, in his mission, you know, his da'wah is to, um, you know, telling people, there's only one main thing, is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the main mission of the Prophet Muhammad In fact, this is the mission of every Prophet. Brothers and sisters, remember when we went through the, the stories of the Prophets, the message of all the Prophets is Allah, Worship Allah. You have no God worthy of worship but Him. So this is not only the message of the Prophet Muhammad This is in fact the message of all the Prophets that came you know, before him وسلم. The only one message is worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worship Allah azza wa jal. So they started negotiation, you know, they started some sort of negotiations. One of the negotiations was to, uh, or there may be a compromise, was, uh, well, they asked him if he wants to, uh, you know, if he wants money, we could give him, uh, you know, all, all the wealth. If he wants, uh, uh, um, if he wants to be a leader, they can make him a leader. If he wants to, uh, if he wants uh, uh, mulk, they can make him a king. If he wants, in fact, to get married, the pro they said, we'll, we'll, we'll let you marry the most beautiful woman in town. These are all, you know, things that, that uh, are attractive, you know, for a uh, layman, you know, people with low iman. But they're trying, you know, they're trying to negotiate with whom? With Rasul, with the Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu was salam, right? With Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, you know, if you want to get married, we'll get, you know, we'll get you married to the most beautiful woman in town, and so on and so forth. So those of you on Facebook, those of you on Instagram, salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh again, zakum Allah khair for attending, may Allah uh, bless you all. Uh, those of you who have issues, uh, uh, maybe hearing or, you know, or not, you maybe try to, uh, uh, try to reboot it from your end, you know, because everybody else is able to listen. So it's more, maybe just from your end. So today is going to be an interesting day. Today is going to be an inter interesting day because, mashallah, talking about Prophet Muhammad, not only Prophet, talking about the Hijrah. But what Hijrah? The very first Hijrah. We're going to talk about the first Hijrah, talking about how to give da'wah. This is an amazing skill that we will learn today, inshallah ta'ala. So after the negotiations or during the negotiations, you know, things again, uh, broke down for, for Quraysh, Islam was spreading, there were more people embracing Islam. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, initiated the very first madrasa. Remember that madrasa that we talked about, sisters and brothers? Right? Remember that madrasa that we talked about, the very first Islamic institution? And that madrasa still exists today, right? It does exist today in Mecca, the house of Al Arqam ibn Al Arqam, the house of Al Arqam, the son of Al Arqam. And I mentioned yesterday, you know, when the Sahaba, they embraced Islam right away. They thought, what should I do to serve this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You know, and Umar ibn Khattab, Umar ibn Khattab, he just popped up in my head right now. Umar ibn Khattab, before he used to go to sleep every night, he used to think as well. He used to ponder. What would you tell your Lord tomorrow, or Umar? This is you know, what we call... Uh, accountability. What would you tell your Lord tomorrow or Umar if Allah was to ask you? If Allah was and Allah will ask you and Allah will question you, and He's used to say, What would you tell? What would, what would be your excuse? What would be your justification? What would be your justification with regard to a cow that trapped 
in Iraq. Why didn't you pave the road for that cow? Had you paved the road for that cow, the, the cow wouldn't have you know, tripped. The cow wouldn't have tripped. So this is this is the muhasaba. This is the you know that how vigilant they were and, and how God conscious they were. Radiallahu anhum wardahum. So this man, Al Arqam ibn Al Arqam, how old was he, brothers and sisters? Remember? Those of you out there? I mentioned this yesterday. Those of you on Facebook, those of you on Instagram, I mentioned Al Arqam ibn Al Arqam. How old was he yesterday? You know, I mentioned that yesterday. He's a young boy, right? How old was he? Come on, guys. How old was he? Quickly, quickly, quickly. He was 17, Layla. Zakallah khair. He was 17 years old, Hafiz. He was. You know, youngster, a 17 year old boy today is just, you know, busy doing what? You tell me. You tell me. I mean, I, of, course, of course, we cannot generalize, but a 17 year old, like lay, lay man, 17 year old boy today, is busy with what? Illa man rahim Allah, except those that Allah has, have, has mercy upon. But the, the, uh, uh, the majority of these kids today, 17 years old, 16 and what not, teenagers, they're busy with what? What they're busy with? What they're busy with? PlayStation? Iwa Khalid Tuzani? PlayStation? PlayStation? Insta? Girls? Uh, Insta and girls? Uh, there's a fatwa on that one. <laughs> <laughs> there's a fatwa on the insta girl and girls there's a fatwa on that one <laughs> but you know you know what i'm talking about it's on their smartphones on their social media so here's a social he's a 17 year old boy right here's a 17 year old boy who who has a a, a, a vision who has a vision yani, how can i serve islam i don't know much but i can offer my house Right? I can offer my house. So he offered his house, radiallahu anhu wa the least, right? So you, I don't know, you know brothers and sisters, because we were talking about this yesterday. I don't know if your sisters and brothers thought of how you could serve your deen somehow. Just don't stay still. Don't stay still. D-S-S. D-S-S. Don't stand still. Do something for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Move. For the deen of Allah Azza wa do something, teach, uh, tutor, uh, help, serve, uh, whatever path you find, you know, that you could do something good, do it inshallah ta'ala, volunteer, you know, whatever you can do, but just don't stand still. Anyways, so um, in that school, this is where the Sahaba used to learn. This is where the Prophet Muhammad used to come whenever there's a new re revelation. He would go and teach it to the Sahaba. Anhum but despite all that, again, abuse, you know, uh, um, social, well, yes, a lot of emotional abuse, of course, because of the parents of those who have embraced Islam and whatnot, and also physical abuse, right, kept on, you know, becoming really prevalent at that time. We talked earlier about Bilal and we talked about Al Khabbab. We talked about, you know, uh, many other Sahabi, Sa'd Nabi Waqqas, and many others. So the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, thought maybe it's time for, you know, some people maybe to make hijrah, to migrate to a peaceful land. So they thought, Prophet Muhammad thought of Al Hijrah, where? To Abyssinia, Al Habasha. To Al Habasha. Uh, remember when I said you know yesterday also there were some chapters from the Quran that were revealed you know like uh, Surah Al-Mutafifin chapter of Al-Mutafifin Al-An'am all the surahs that were revealed in Mecca they were all talking about empowerment all about Iman all the surahs all the chapters of the Quran revealed in the Meccan period they all had to deal with the Iman of the Sahaba all the Fara'id came later on in Medina. All the other obligatory actions came later on in Medina, like Salah, like uh, Siyam, like Jihad, like Hijab, you know, uh, all this came in Medina. But in Mecca, it was all about Iman, 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 you know, to strengthen and empower their Iman and their creed. Um, so the Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu salam, thought of Al-Habasha, Abyssinia. Brothers and sisters, why do you think Prophet Muhammad thought of Al-Habasha? Why particularly Al-Habasha? 
Why particularly, you know, Abyssinia or what we call today Eritrea? Why do you think? Those of you on Facebook, those of you on Instagram, why do you think? Other than Najashi, okay, we will talk about Najashi. Did the Prophet travel to Abyssinia? No, he did not travel to Abyssinia. Probably he did not travel outside of Mecca, right? So how did he know about Abyssinia? How did he know about what's happening in Abyssinia? Christian king, okay, Christian king. He knows about Christian king. He knows about an Najashi, who he says is a man who's just, is a man who is just and he's fair. And he and nobody gets abused in his uh, in his in his country. By why particularly Abyssinia? No, it has nothing to do with trading. To do da'wah? Well, eventually, of course, they will do da'wah. Eventually, of course, you know, when they travel there, the Sahaba it's their mission. They live da'wah. Say that this is my path. I call towards Allah. This is my path. I call towards Allah, me and whoever follows me. So as uh, soon as those who said, La ilaha illallah, they knew their mission, they knew their job, they knew their obligation is to go and give da'wah. Right? So why particularly... You know, Abyssinia. Well, Christians are closer to Islam than most think. Yes, but uh, Sham at the time, you know, the Romans, they were there and they were also Christians. So why? Why Al why, why Habasha? Al Habasha is not a Muslim country at the time, right? Al Habasha, they were not Muslims, they were Christians. And yes, we know that the uh, uh, their king was a just king. But my brothers and sisters, here's you know one of the main reasons why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he uh, chose Abyssinia. Abyssinia was that country because Quraysh they did not only have authority over their over Mecca or Medina, uh, not even Medina, but over Mecca. There was no Medina at the time; it was Yathrib. So Quraysh did not have authority only over Mecca and its surrounding over the, the whole area the only place subhanallah that you know or country that you know they did not have any authority you know on was al habasha so if the muslims were to reach habasha Quraysh can't do anything they can't do anything because al nashaji again on top of that not only he was a just ruler but al habasha was not within you know the authority of Al Arab and Quraysh, right? So the Prophet Muhammad, this is what we talk about strategic planning, right? Talking about management, talking about leadership skills, talking about managerial skills. We will talk about all that, inshallah, ta'ala, throughout the series. And wait until we go to Medina, inshallah, ta'ala, and then we will be spending the days or days or nights with Prophet Muhammad talking about him in his home and what he does and what not. It will be more and more interesting, inshallah, once we travel to, you know, to Medina. But now we're still in Mecca, right? We're still in Mecca, so we're building the foundation for the Hijra. But now this is the first Hijra. You know, Al-Habasha. The Prophet never traveled to Al-Habasha. There was no CNN. There was no Fox News. There was no BBC. You know, that would be on no social media. Uh, no, you know, wahi, is it wahi? Yes, but at the same time, Prophet Muhammad, he, he, he used to get the news from outside as well. Al Habasha is a country that, that no, um, no, uh, that Quraysh did not have any uh, control of, subhanAllah. Why didn't he travel as well? Why didn't Prophet Muhammad go with them initially? La, not yet. He will, but not now, because he still has to complete his mission. His mission was not was not you know uh, was not done yet, and Allah Azza wa has not given him the order yet to travel. It is for the other Sahaba who've been abused. Why? Because also, brothers and sisters, Abu Talib was standing with Prophet Muhammad alayhi so much so that Abu Talib did something amazing. He brought in about twenty youngsters, twenty youngsters. 
20 youngsters, he gave them from Banu Hashem, Banu Abdul Muttalib. And he gave them, you know, all they had like this, you know, weapons with them, sticks or swords or whatnot. And then they went together into Quraysh. And he said, Muhammad, my son, you know, he's like, you know, my nephew. I'm supporting him, although I am not following his religion, but I'm supporting him. And you have all these people here. Anybody who touches him, anybody who harms him, they will have to deal with us. And all these youngsters were holding their, their sticks and their, you know, uh, arms waiting to, uh, you know, uh, go for, you know, and start a fight with anybody who's tried to come and harm Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu wassalam. So how many people traveled initially? As they were traveling, by the way, I said yesterday that there were two chapters from the Quran that were revealed. There were two surahs that were revealed when the Muslims traveled to, to uh, Al-Habasha, right? Um, it was Surat Maryam and Surat Al-Kahf. Maryam, they're going to Al-Habasha. Al-Habasha is, is a Christian country, so you need to learn and know something about Mary, Maryam. So you see the beauty of the Quran? The beauty of the Quran, the revelations of the Quran, the revelations are revealed based on, you know, the time, the circumstances, the place, subhanAllah, right? So this is how the Quran does not, it's not like, you know, it's get revealed just like for the sake of being you know, of a revelation. La, there's always sabab al nuzul When you study fiqh al-Quran, you know, al-Quran and fiqh of the Quran, you will learn with regard to asbab al nuzul for instance. The reason why this surah was revealed, or the reason why this particular ayah was revealed. So Surah Maryam, you know, as they were traveling, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was they were prepared to get tra you know, to be to travel to Al, -Al Habasha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Surah Maryam. And they're gonna need it. They're gonna need it because something's gonna happen when they go to Abyssinia with an Najashi. So they will need something, you know, they will need some information about you know Christians, about Maryam, about Isa alayhi salam. Surah Al-Kahf. Why Surah Al-Kahf, brothers and sisters? Why Surah Al-Kahf? Those of you on Facebook, those of you on Instagram, why the cave? We understand why Surah Mary, Maryam, but why, why Al-Kahf? Brothers, sisters, why Surah Al-Kahf was revealed? I understand Mary has something to do with Christians in, in Abyssinia, in Al-Habasha. But why Surah Al-Kahf then? And remember, as I said, the Quran, you know, when it gets revealed, there's a reason for every revelation. There's a reason for it. So what is the reason for, for Surah Al-Kahf to be revealed at that time when the Sahaba were traveling to, to Abyssinia? The story of the seven youngsters who are known to be to the Christians. It's almost that one as well. Because Jews asked the Prophet about him. No. It's Layla, you're almost there. Okay, because Jews asked Prophet Muhammad about... No. No. Not that one. Uh, that was uh, something later. Steadfastness of the man in the cave. Yes, you may say that. Faced oppression. Yes, you're there. You're almost there. You're almost there. Escaping persecution as role model. Yes, Muhtas Shim Qazi on Facebook. Muhtashim, Muhtashim Qazi on Facebook. Yes, you are right, Mashallah. He says, escaping the persecution. Naam. They were they had to escape those people, those seven, you know, youngsters. They also because there was this king. I think his name was, you know, from you know, in 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 uh uh, in that land and there was those seven youngsters those kids who came out you know escaping persecution from that king so it's like hijra it's like the hijra of those youngsters so you people are also doing hijra there were people who did hijra before you there were people who also escaped persecution before you so take an example allah 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 al-quran wa jamal al-quran 
Allah and the Quran and the beauty of the Quran. You see, when we live with the Quran, when you live, when you understand, now you understand more. Oh yes, it makes more sense. You know, the Sahaba are leaving, they left things behind them, they live in their families, they live in their wealth, they live everything, so they just they just want to save their iman. They want to save their iman, so they escape persecution. Those Sahabis, because before them, they were these youngsters who also where you know had to escape persecution of that king so allah azza wa revealed those two surahs surah al-kahf and surah and surah uh, maryam so when the sahaba يعني, uh, came out they came out either singles or those with husbands and wives initially the first trip the first hijra you had 18 sahabis and sahabiyas 18 together 18, you know, men and women. Muslimin, and the second, because there were two hijras, you know, two al habasha like, like They were like, uh, you know, in, 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 in sort of like two segments. The first, we had about 18. The second time, there were about 82 people that left together, you know. And the Sahaba, all together, there were about 300 people. So one third of the Sahaba traveled outside of Mecca. You know, 82, the second, you know, Duf'a, uh, you know, the first wave, you had 18 people. And then the second wave, 82 people. So there was about, you know, three, you know, 300 Sahabis, 82 from three, you know, 300 is about one third of the Sahabas who left Mecca to Medina. And amongst them was Uthman ibn Affan. And Uthman ibn Affan was from the elite of, of, uh, of the Arabs of Quraysh. And Uthman ibn Affan was not poor man. He was rich. Amongst them was Ruqayya bin to Muhammad. Ruqayya, she was the daughter of Prophet Muhammad. She was married to Uthman. So Uthman and his wife together. It's not because you know, Muhammad would, uh, the Prophet Muhammad you know, would have said, no, no, my daughter stays with me. You guys go. I keep my daughter with me. Her husband wants to leave. He can, but my daughter stays with me. No. Achachas. Achachis out there. Husbands and wives. Moms and dads. You know, she followed her husband. Huh? Yes. She followed her husband. The dad says, no, you stay. Your husband wants to go to, uh, to tra travel to Dubai or to America or whatnot or Canada. La, you know, you stay here with me. Let him go. And if he comes and he doesn't, when he comes, he can come and visit you. You can, you can zoom. <laughs> he can zoom. He can zoom you in. You can, you can see him through zoom. No, 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 no. The husband goes. The, the wife, she went with him. She followed him. Ja'far ibn Abi Talib. Also, another member of the family of the Prophet Muhammad, Ja'far, the cousin of the Prophet Muhammad, ibn Abu Talib, the son of Abu Talib, also were amongst those who, uh, who traveled. Abdul Rahman ibn Awf. Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, radiallahu anhu wa radah. Oh, Abdul Rahman, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, also traveled as Zubair, Ummu Habiba, Ummu Habiba ibn, ibn to Abu Sufyan. Ummu Habiba, she was not married to the Prophet Muhammad initially. Ummu Habiba, she is the daughter of Abu Sufyan, the elite of Quraysh. Imagine the elite of Quraysh, the master, right? The big leader, Abu Sufyan, his daughter. She also traveled to, to, uh, to uh, 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 Ab Abyssinia. So there were some rich people, wealthy people, powerful people. And there were some poor, of course, you know, slaves and whatnot. So... It is a message to an Najashi. As if the Prophet Muhammad is sending a message to an Najashi, to the leader of Abyssinia. That these people I'm sending to you, they are not weak. They are not from the weak. Right? They are from the elite of the Arabs. So I'm not sending you just slaves and you know the weak. No, I'm sending you people like Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, like uh, Uthman ibn Affan. These are the you know very powerful Sahabis. You know, that's one message to Najashi. And maybe there's another message that the Prophet Muhammad uh, um, was sending also to the Najashi that these people, right, that these people, they don't need to travel. Like uh, Uthman ibn Affan, or Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, or even Umm Habiba. They're rich. Right? They don't need to travel. But they're leaving because of the persecution. Right? Because you may say, well, because these guys, they're poor, they, they have no job there, so maybe this is why they move into Abyssinia. No, 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 no. They have money. They're not poor. 
So they are leaving because they've been persecuted. That's another message to uh, an Najashi. And maybe another message to the weak, to the slaves who left as well, or the old slaves, ex-slaves, that I'm also sending with you guys my daughter. My daughter, Fatima, uh, uh, my, my daughter, Uqayya, my daughter, Uqayya, she's also going with you, right? So it's not because you people, خلاص, you can go and, la, 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 my daughter, she's also going with you. Ibn Ammi, my cousin, is also going with you. Jafa, my daughter, my cousin, you know, so nobody can complain. The weak cannot complain, the poor cannot complain, the rich cannot complain, and Najashi cannot complain. This is, you know, the so many messages out there that the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, was sending. And then they went and they reached Al Habasha. Quraysh, they heard about those Muslims who traveled to Al Habasha. Who's in Al Habasha? Al Najashi. Do we have anyone here who knows Al Najashi? Yes. Who? Amr ibn al-As. Amr ibn al-As was not a Muslim at the time. And he was Dahiyat al-Arab. We used to call him Dahiyat al-Arab. Yani the smartest from the Arab. Amr ibn al-As was known to be brilliant as they say in England. <laughs> they, he, he was known to be really, really, really smart. You know. So, uh, and then uh, Abdullah ibn Abi Rabi'ah, his friend, you know, they went together. He says, I know, I know him, he's a close friend of mine. Because they said, go and get them back in. Go and get them back in. Because they went in secret. So they went and they bought a lot of kids, you know, gifts for an Najashi. They bought a lot of gifts for an Najashi. He knows that Najashi liked gifts, especially from leather. Gifts from leather. So they bought him some gifts trying to bribe him, right? And then Amr ibn As, he goes, Ayyuh al Malik, O you king, Ha'ulai al these boys, these Sufaha, these lowest of our, you know, uh, of our of our tribe, the laws of our people, they left their parents. They left our home, their homes. They left our country. They left their parents and their mothers. Their moms and dads are crying. Look, I'm going to ask how he's entering to talk to you know uh, a Najashi. He's trying to be you know like emotional. Look, the moms and dads are crying. Uh, on top of that, they left their faith. They left their faith. And 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 uh, uh, and 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 they they're not gonna enter your your faith, or oh, 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 king. Not only they left their, their you know their faith, they're not going to enter your faith either. Their parents want them back, so bring them back. Let them you know. Let me take them back to their homes, to their parents. And Najashi, he was a just man. He says, no, I have to hear from them first. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, brothers and sisters, إِذَا جَاءَكُمْ فَاسِقٌ بِنَبَأٍ فَتَبَيَّنُوا When a fasiq, a dissolent, comes to you with some news, don't believe the news. Get the information. Do your due diligence. Why? So that you may not you know, cause any evil or any harm, you know, by misjudging what you have heard. Maybe that person who came brought you that news, you know, maybe that person was not actually telling the truth. So don't just believe anything you hear. That's what Allah is usually saying. Brothers and sisters, please remember this. A lot of us fall into this, this mistake and this trap. Sometimes we hear things and then we build our judgments based on what we hear. Or sometimes what we read, you need something about a sheikh, or you need something about an imam, and then you believe what you hear, or you hear something about a boy, or you hear something about a girl, or about a brother, or about a sister, or you read something, and then you just what? You believe what you hear, and you believe what you, you know, sometimes not with social media, not even, I mean, I don't believe things now no more on social media. It's got to be so, you know, if it's not authentic and real, it's so hard now to know whether which is real and which is not. People fake everything nowadays, especially on social media. They make somebody talk and they move his lips as if that person is talking, but it is not that person who's talking, right? 
Be careful. When somebody comes to you with some news, فتبينو. go and get your, you know, the information correct. Don't just believe anything you hear. So Najashi, when he heard that from uh, from from Amr ibn As, he says, "No, I cannot actually let them go with you until I hear from them." This is justice. This is, you know, when we talk about fairness and justice, this is justice, and this is how an imam should be. This is how a judge must be to hear from both. When the woman comes complaining, crying, you know. When the girl comes into you as a dad, for instance, crying, my brother hit me, my brother hit me. Yeah, maybe he had, maybe he hit her, but maybe that brought her brother, his eyes is, is black. <laughs> maybe she punched him in the eye and then she came crying. Hey, Baba, dad, dad, my brother, my brother. Allah, may Allah forgive me. May Allah forgive me. I did that many times on, on my son. You know, my daughter comes, you know, the little one, and then I just go crazy on Omar. And then I'm like, oh, but, but I did not do anything. She's the one. She's the one. Oh, but I know. I, it's just, they don't let you think, subhanAllah. They just, because the little girls. We dads have a weakness. We dads have a weakness. I don't know, Brother Ghani. But Brother Ghani don't have girls, man. You only have boys, mashallah. You don't have girls. But those of you who have girls, they would know, right? So they, you know, she comes and she cries. And then, you know, and then you just go straight to the, you did it. And then you just want to, you know. And no, it's not me. And I didn't do nothing. You know, it's not. Uh, right. And Najashi, he says, I have to hear from them. Go and hear from him. Or go hear from her. Hear from both sides to make a judgment before, you know, issue in a judgment or whatnot. Always hear from both sides. So he says, I have to hear from them. I have to hear from them. So they came. There were about 100. Remember, I said about 83 plus 18. They were about 100. So they came to see An-Najashi. So they lined up. They lined up, right? Najashi was there. And uh, the Muslims were there. And Amr ibn As was there too. With his friend. Uh, then the king spoke. He says, Balagani, I heard that you have left your religion, your faith. And you're not following my faith. You came to my country. You left your fathers, your parents, your families. What brought you to my country? There was no visa at the time. There was no boundary. There was just like no go and stop in the, in the customs. <laughs> customs for your passport to be stamped to enter the country. No, you come with camels and then all donkeys or whatnot, or even walking. You come in and then you just leave okay, your country here, the country there, right? So... He brought them. He called them, you know, he says, brother. So when they came in, he told them, I heard that you left your country, you left your deen, you left your faith, and you're not going to follow my faith. Uh, what brought you here? Who came to speak? Who was the spokesman? man? Oh, what an amazing orchestrated scene. One of the best scenes ever. Here, the Sahaba and Najashi, Amr al As. Who was the spokesman and why? But the Hafiz says Jafar. Jafar, the cousin of the Prophet. Okay, why Jafar was the spokesman? Have you ever had two minutes to give da'wah to the Queen of England? Or the king of whatever, Denmark, or the queen of Denmark, or whoever, the, or the king of this country. Or okay. You know, imagine you have a very, you know, uh, high profile person, right? And then you're there to give da'wah to that person. Why Jafar was the spokesman? Not because he was eloquent. I'm sorry, Sister Fatima. Not because he was eloquent. Why Jafar was the spokesman? Salat Maryam, what does Salat Maryam have to do? He memorized it, but the others also, they know Salat Maryam. Why Ja'far was the spokesman? man? Once you know the answer, you'll, you'll be in awe. In awe. Really? Yes. This is the training sisters and brothers they got from Dar al-Qam ibn al-Qam. 
Remember that these people graduated from that school. All these Sahabis, they graduated from that school of Dar al-Arqam, al arqam So now things will come into action. Not because he was the most confident one. Not because he was the most eloquent sp speaker. Not because this or not because... That. No, 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 no. Wait until you hear what happened and why Ja'far particularly. Why Ja'far was the spokesman. You will see inshallah ta'ala. I know this is the training, the graduation. Now it's exam time. Now it's exam time. Now it's test time. You graduated from the school of Dal Alqam. You come here. Now we're going to put you on a on a on a test. What's gonna happen? Why? Yes. Tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala. Tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, I will tell you. Why particularly Ja'far was the spokesman? Why him? How to give da'wah in two minutes? Two minutes. Change the mind of change the mind of an Najashi. Totally. What would Amr do? Amr will ask, what would he do? He's a, he's a very close friend. He bribed him. What happened? Tomorrow, inshallah, ta'ala, my brothers and sisters, we'll meet you, inshallah. We will talk more. Thank you. Thank you, Shabnam Kulsum. Thank you, Khalid Tuzani. Thank you, Nasima. Thank you, Yashmin. Thank you, Layla. Thank you, Mu'nisa. Thank you, Fatima. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Khalid. Thank you, my brothers. And thank you, Coco. More than long time no see, my man. Thank you, brothers and sisters, those of you on Facebook, those of you on Instagram. Inshallah ta'ala. We we'll hope to see you tomorrow as well. Bi'idnillah. Thank you, Shazia. Thank you all. We'll see you, inshallah ta'ala. I hope you're taking notes. Please go and share this on your, you know, these videos on YouTube, these sessions that are on YouTube, that are on Instagram, that are on Facebook. Like, like, share, share. Like, like, share, share. Zakumla khair. Now, long time no see. You're so quiet now. Maybe you're drinking your tea or your coffee and you're just so quiet. It's good. It's good. Yasmin, Zakallah khair, Barakallah fikum. May Allah bless you. We'll see you tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala. Alrighty? Ya Allah, fi amalillah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, sisters and brothers. You take care. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum there. Assalamu alaikum here. Assalamu alaikum.